What's going on, everyone? Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here, talking about an interesting idea I saw on the World Wide Web that I wanted to float your way, and we'll break it down. And then we're going to talk about ESPN's just all-time fraud NFL offseason rankings to wrap up the show. But Jack Duffin, a great Twitter follow if you haven't already, floated out an interesting idea that I wanted to address on today's show. And that was a hypothetical for the Browns, and that included signing Hopkins to a two-year, $25 million contract and trading Donovan Peoples-Jones for a fourth. So I can see the logic in if you're adding DeAndre Hopkins and you got a crowded wide receiver room, maybe move on from DPJ, who's going to be a free agent at the end of this year. Now Duffin would respond to that tweet with this here. I'm not a fan of this move, but exploring the process of D-Hop. A wide receiver will want out due to no targets for them. DPJ most likely as a free agent in 2024. And that makes sense, right? Because you're not moving on from Elijah Moore after trading for him two months ago. And you're not moving on from Amari Cooper with, you know, him coming off his best statistical season really in his NFL career in a lot of ways. So I could see why the Browns would decide, you know what, if we're gonna add DP, if we're gonna add DeAndre Hopkins, we've got to make some room. We got a, a lot of mouths to feed. Let's get something for DPJ. So it's hard to say that I would take Donovan Peoples Jones over DeAndre Hopkins. That's kind of a fireable offense for an NFL GM, but I can also understand the argument of what's best for this team long term versus what's best for this team short-term. Because long-term, you might have something in DPJ. Look at the improvement every single year of his career. His rookie season, 304 yards. He has climbed up to being a near 1,000-yard receiver. That's a 1,000-yard receiver, or at least 839 yards, with Jacoby Brissett slinging the rock for most of last season, and a quarterback change mid-season. So DPJ has shown a lot of potential to be a legit wide receiver too in this league, whereas DeAndre Hopkins no doubt is a better wide receiver in 2023 than DPJ, but I don't know how much longer I can say that for, right? DeAndre Hopkins is pushing 31 years old. He's going to be approaching the twilight of his career, and if you think DPJ is only about to hit his prime, Right now, it might sound crazy to say, give me DPJ over Hopkins, but will that be crazy in two or three years? Like, if you're a big believer in DPJ long term, I could see why you'd rather pass on signing DeAndre Hopkins if that means potentially moving on from the former Michigan Wolverine. So the key question I have is this. Are the Browns re-signing DPJ? If they've kind of already made up their mind that, hey, one of two things is going to happen this season. He's going to ball out, and if so... Then in free agency, he's going to command a lot of money, something we will not have to spend, or he's going to have an underwhelming season, and that's going to make it easy for us not to re-sign him, right? I feel like the Browns are kind of going to be in no man's land where unless he finishes with like 700 yards and he doesn't get a ton of free agency attention, but he played well enough for Cleveland to want to bring him back, there's a good chance he's leaving because of one or two reasons. Now, looking ahead, look at the free agent class for the wide receivers in 2024. This past season kind of stunk out loud. Next offseason couldn't be more different. You got OBJ and Mike Evans on the market. Tyler Boyd, who I did not realize was 29 years old. DJ Chark, Michael Pittman, Marquise Brown, Darnell Mooney, T. Higgins, Chase Claypool. Right, I can probably confidently say five of those guys are better than DPJ. Uh, Michael Pittman, Marquise Brown, Darnell Mooney, T. Higgins, Mike Evans. I could probably make a good argument. I'd take those guys over DPJ. Not DPJ slander here. Um, I like DPJ maybe a little bit more than Mooney, although Darnell Mooney was awesome two seasons ago. But that's aside from the point. What I'm trying to get across right now is there may be some extensions that get done for these wide receivers. But if the market does look like that, and those are all the free agent wide receivers, DPJ could be a pretty cheap free agent. Like, look at the top five highest paid wide receivers from this past free agency pool. Alan Lazard got the most money. Alan Lazard wouldn't be top five on that last list if it was his birthday. Four-year, $40 million, $44 million contract. So if that's the pool, right, if, if Mike Evans and T. Higgins and... Darnell Mooney are all free agents next season, they're going to be commanding much more money than what Jacoby Myers and Juju Smith-Schuster got. And if that's the case, all of a sudden, DPJ might be pushed down the pecking order a little bit. 
and it might not be super expensive to get him if he's the sixth or seventh highest paid wide receiver in free agency for 2024. If I had to make a way too early projection, and it is very early because it really is dependent on how 2023 goes, maybe he's in the three-year $27 million range. I feel like that's on the low side, but if DPJ puts up a 700-ish yard performance, right? If Elijah Moore kind of emerges as this team's wide receiver too, maybe DPJ regresses just a little bit. And if it's three-year, $9 million, maybe Cleveland could swing that. Although I don't really see that unless they decide to move on from Amari Cooper and prioritize DPJ in free agency. So if Cleveland has sort of decided, we kind of know this is the last year of DPJ in the land, Maybe a trade isn't a bad idea, right? Now, if I had to think of a team that would be interested in Donovan Peoples-Jones, maybe he goes back to Michigan, right? Plays for Detroit, and you get a fifth-round pick out of it. I think Jack Duffin suggested a fourth. I don't think you're getting a fourth for DPJ for a contract season, right? Uh, I think a fifth is probably more in the wheelhouse, but we're really arguing over little details here. So a fifth-rounder for DPJ is... A bit intriguing because on one hand, you're not uber short draft capital next year, believe it or not. You're still without a first. That belongs to Houston, but you do have your second back. Now, you don't have two-thirds because of Quezzi Adolfo Mensa uh, getting a comp pick for you after he got hired by Minnesota. So you could stand to add some extra picks. Plus, Cleveland is very far in the red for cap space in 2024. So they'll be much more reliant on the draft to build their roster. And an extra day three pick could do wonders for this team. So let me know, would you trade Donovan Peoples-Jones to free up a roster spot and have it really all make sense to sign DeAndre Hopkins? I'm not saying in order to get D-Hop, you have to trade DPJ away, but I think Daff, uh, excuse me, I think J Jack Duffin is on the right path of, if you're signing Hopkins, there's a chance that someone's leaving the wide receiver room. Now, before we get to ESPN's abysmal rankings for the NFL offseason, if you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. We're trying to get you guys Brown's YouTube content all offseason long. And here at Chat Sports, it's all about the channel size, and size does matter at Chat Sports when it comes to studio space. And right now, I'm sharing a wall with the boss man, James Yoder, and hopefully he's going to hear that the Browns report needs more studio space, and that means we need more subscribers. So help us grow this channel by clicking that subscribe button. I don't, know what, I don't know what they're smoking in Bristol, but do not pass it to me because ESPN put out their NFL offseason rankings and it was hot garbage. Let's get started. Number one, I actually respect it. The Washington Commanders, not because of what they did in free agency or the draft, but because they moved on from Daniel Snyder. I can respect the troll there from ESPN. Dolphins at two, I don't know, they had like four picks in the draft, but okay, whatever. Cowboys, Eagles, and Packers round out the top five. Bengals, what did the Bengals do? They lost two starting safeties. The Chiefs, the Bills, the Panthers, the Steelers. Steelers had a good draft, didn't do a whole lot in free agency. Um, the Niners at 11, the Cardinals and the Bears picked up good future picks. Denver at 14, I don't know, Jim. Uh, Chargers at 15, pa Patriots at 16, Jags at 17, Seattle comes in next at 18, and there's Cleveland at 19. <sighs> All right. Let's look at the rest of it before I really start to tear ESPN a new one so I can try and bring my blood pressure down. Baltimore at 21, Houston at 22, the Jets come in at 23, Colts next up at 24, Saints 25, Falcons 26, and this is how it rounds out with the Bucks, the Lions, the G-Men, Port New York, I didn't think it was that bad. The Raiders I agree with, the Rams I agree with, and the Titans I agree with all being bottom three. This is an absolute joke. The Browns did not have the 19th best NFL offseason when they added how many starters on defense? Zadarius Smith, who's gone over 10-plus sacks three of his last four seasons, a two-time Super Bowl champ at Juan Thornhill to command the safety room? Yeah, that's 19th best for sure. Oh, they also got Elijah Moore, one of the speediest wide receivers to complete this wide receiver room. They had a great draft by all accounts with getting Cedric Tillman and Siaka Ika, two potential early starters in day two of the draft. So this is just a load of hot garbage. But this is what Bill Barnwell said. Juan Thornhill joins from the Chiefs to take Johnson's spot in the lineup. They also imported two Vikings in Dalvin Tomlinson and Darius Smith. 
Tomlinson will be an essential cog as Cleveland attempts to fix a run defense that ranked 28th in DVOA a year ago. Oba Okoronko, who will be the who will be the team's third pass rusher, is coming off a season in which he ranked 13th in pass rush win rate. Just stop writing, Bill. You nailed it right there. They got Dalvin Tomlinson, one of the best run-stopping defensive tackles on the market this year. They got Zadarius Smith and Okoronko because they felt like it. Like, Cleveland nailed it in free agency this year, and we haven't even touched the draft. You don't have to go on any further, Barnwell. The Browns did great this offseason. But alas, we continue. I'm not sure they got the right players, Barnwell wrote. Smith looked like a steal when he racked up nine and a half sacks over the Vikings' first nine games last season, but he managed only a half a sack over the rest of the campaign. Injuries caused the 30-year-old to fail a physical with the Ravens before he signed in Minnesota. This is a high-risk, high-reward trade for the Browns, even if they didn't give up much draft capital in the process. So Bill Bill Barnwell has been added to the Browns' hater list for 2023 because he says high-risk. What's the risk? You're going to miss the fifth round pick for next season? Like, no, it's not a high risk. It's a high risk if it's a day one or day two pick. Throwing a couple day three picks at a guy who had 10 sacks last year on a down season when his knee was out for half the year doesn't seem uberly risky to me. If anything, seems like a high reward if he can play a full healthy season and the nine and a half sacks he had over the first half of the season can be extrapolated through a whole healthy 2023 campaign. Boom, you got two double-digit sack players in Smith and Garrett. So I'm not subscribing to this idea of being high risk. Now, having said all that, I can respect the fact and understand this is what we do as sports fans. We get very frustrated. We love having meaningless debates in the offseason, and we cannot prove our side for months or sometimes even years to come if we're debating about draft picks. So this is what we do. We get all sorts of in our feelings. We get very agitated. We get very upset if someone from the national media comes for our team. But I'm not going to stand for this slander. So what do you think? Did Cleveland improve this offseason? Improved a lot more to be than the 19th best offseason in the NFL. I'm putting one for yes 100 times. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. Before we let you guys go, it is time for our pick a card time to end the show. If you're just joining us the last couple of days, the way this works is I shuffle this deck of cards. Me and whichever producer I have the luxury of working with today pick a random card, and we simply see if we have a 1 in 52 chance of getting it correct. Sam Brown, behind the computer. What are you going to go with? Uh, We're going to go nine of spades. Nine of spades. Nine of spades. Nine of spades. Put me down for the... Ten of diamonds. Big money, big money. Nine big money, of spades. Big money, big money. Ten of hearts. Get out ten of here. hearts. Let's One go. of. I, I was a ten of diamonds. Oh. That, right. I heard a red. I heard a red card. Ten That's of diamonds. I said ten of hearts. I got okay. way too high for that. Shambles. One. I'll see you guys later.